Hello, I'm Stuart Jackson, and I work as a family counselor. What that means is that I have a chance to meet with individuals and couples and uh, parents, sometimes whole families, to discuss matters that they have defined as the most important things that they want to talk about. And families are really different these days, aren't they? I mean, we think about the makeup and the structure of families around the world, and uh, it's very different now. And people are able to find family in many different ways, and that is really a good thing uh, for so many. Uh, my thinking about families and the importance of families has been greatly influenced by the extraordinary work of Dr. Murray Bowen, who discovered evidence that suggests that Families operate as units, so that what affects one is going to affect all, more or less. Uh, so that individual problems in people are seen by family counselors as family issues. And there's a lot that gets better when we don't blame one person for carrying the problems of the whole family. Well, even though families are very different and of different sizes and shapes all around the world, there's one thing that we all have in common right now, and that is that we are all living in a very anxious world. This coronavirus is affecting us from Birmingham to Bangkok. And we are responding and reacting in ways that anxiety pushes and pulls us around. Now, we've learned that anxiety comes in at least two forms. One is uh, the anxiety of what is, what is actually threatening us. And the second form is uh, something unique to the human species, and that is ang the anxiety of what might be. Now, I am from a family, we are professional worriers. And there's a good reason uh, for that. We can go back in our family history and find that uh, um, there's been some tragedies that affected the way people uh, set up patterns and behaved that have come down through the generations. Uh, in 1918, my great uncle Seal who lived down in Clark County, Alabama, was a strong and maybe the youngest of several brothers, uh, my grandfather being one of his older brothers. Well, when World War I came along, all the brothers enlisted in uh, the various uh, military services, but they talked SEAL into staying in uh, Grove Hill to take care of their parents and also the farm. He was strong and he was capable and so he did that. All of the other brothers went into the army and the navy in various service forms and when they did they got a flu shot. But Seal who did not go didn't get the flu shot but he did get the Spanish flu and he died uh, tragically uh, because he stayed at home. Now, um, my grandfather and his brothers carried some guilt about that for the rest of their life. And there has been a kind of hypervigilance about illness uh, when I was coming along and the importance of doctors and, and being careful and don't, don't, do anything too risky, stuff like that. Well, it, it all has some basis in fact, doesn't it? So, but it can also get out of hand. I was thinking today about an old book that I read when I was a little boy, The Story of Henny Penny. I love that story. We know it is Chicken Little too, but I also liked it as Henny Penny and all the characters of Turkey Lurkey and Goosey Lucy and Ducky Wucky and Foxy Loxy. Uh, that, that fox. Hmm. 
Well, you know, an acorn fell on Henny Penny's head and she thought the sky was falling. So she went running around. They wanted to go tell the king and uh, for him to do something about it. And the story ends in different ways. It's a happy ending when they do get to see the king. Uh, it's a bad ending when the fox says, let's go in my lair and talk about it. And uh, Well, that's the end of Henny Penny and all Henny Penny's friends. Well, uh, how can we focus ourselves on what is the threat and respond to it rather than reacting to what might be or uh, letting our fears run away with us. And I have just a couple of thoughts about that. Uh, I know you will have some thoughts too, and uh, they will be very helpful to others if you want to make a comment after this. Uh, and the first is, I think it's important, at least for me, to vet the way I get my news. That is, get it from multiple sources and not just from from one uh, bureau or one style. Uh, television news is different than print journalism. That's different from magazines. And there are good, wonderful professional journalists in all of those. But uh, they have different pressures on how they present the news. So I think it's important to uh, get a balance of what kind of news you're getting. Uh, secondly, I think it's important to go outside. I haven't heard the term forest bathing until recently, but uh, just to be outside. So spring is starting in the northern hemisphere, and um, there are miracles out there. And, of course, six feet away, of course, but to be outside and to uh, uh, breathe and to get some exercise and to uh, relax your mind. And finally, I'll just say one more, and that is I think it's important to stay in touch with family and friends. Uh, if you are sheltering at home, uh, maybe there's extra time that you could write some cards or letters or emails or phone calls or somehow reach out. I think it's important for us to stay in touch with those who are closest to us. Well, I wish you well. I hope you are well. Uh, you are, uh, you have the capacity for great strength. So be strong, stay home.